Hello and person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing this beautiful object behind me, the Jupiter's moon Europa. One of the more intriguing moons out there, and one of the primary targets for the upcoming missions that are going to be starting in the next few years. But the actual research for these missions officially is going to be starting now, and that's because of one reason. A few days ago, the iconic Juno mission that's orbiting Jupiter has officially completed the closest flyby of Europa in the last couple of decades. In the process allowing the mission to take incredible pictures of this object, some of which we're going to be exploring in this video, and other ones that you can find in the link in the description below. And so in this video I actually wanted to talk a little bit more about Europa, why it's such a mysterious and such an unusual moon, but more importantly, focus on the few things that we know about Europa already. And actually one of the main reasons this is such an exciting object is because this is one of two upcoming missions in the next few years that is going to be officially looking for life outside of planet Earth. The upcoming Clipper mission that's going to be launched by ESA in 2024, so just a couple of years from now, is going to be orbiting around Europa with the main purpose being catching signs of potential life. And specifically doing a few flybys of the regions where we suspect Europa might have water plumes coming out from the surface, and then during those flybys, the mission is going to attempt to catch some of those emissions and then analyze them on board, hopefully finding life. With the other mission that's going to be doing something similar, in other words looking for life outside of planet Earth, being the upcoming mission to Titan that we're going to be discussing in another video relatively soon. So I guess subscribe if you'd like to learn more. But in order to prepare for the Clipper mission and in order to prepare for even future missions that might land on Europa, the scientists need to understand what's happening on the surface and need to actually map the surface of Europa a little bit better. And since the Juno mission officially ended its primary mission back in 2021, the scientists have now focused on diverting the mission for other purposes, including the investigation of the moons of Jupiter. It actually investigated Ganymede last year and it's going to be looking at Io next year, and this year, the main focus is Europa, the most exciting moon of Jupiter with some of the more mysterious features on the surface. And so just a few days ago, it completed the closest flyby, flying approximately 300 kilometers above the surface, taking some incredible shots, one of which you can see right here, and sending a lot of other data that's actually still being processed even now, making this the closest approach and the closest look at Europa in the last 20 years, since the Galileo mission that flew by back in the year 2000. Although in this case the flyby was pretty quick, so it only had a few hours to take all of these shots. The probe was actually moving approximately 23.6 kilometers per second, and so all of the shots had to be done really really quickly. The entire flyby only took approximately 2 hours. And one of the first things the scientists want to do with all of this new data is to actually compare the previous images from the Galileo mission with the new images taken by the Juno just now. For example, on the left here you can see the images from 1997 showcasing quite a diverse geology on the surface of Europa. The picture on the right was taken by Juno on September 29th and thus presents us with a slightly different view, but that's because the image has not really been processed just yet. But the thing that the scientists have learned about Europa is that it seems to have a kind of a geological activity happening on the surface. As a matter of fact, it seems to be the only other object except for planet Earth that has something equivalent to, I guess, plate tectonics or continental drift. Except that instead of obviously all of this being rock and water, on Europa the continents seem to be made out of ice, which essentially make the Europa's crust. And all of the crust here is relatively young, it's less than 200 million years old. Which is actually why we don't really find a lot of craters on the surface, when only the bigger ones still visible and still discernible, but even the bigger craters are slowly disappearing and are going to be gone in the next few millions of years. And so this unusual ice shell that's approximately 20 to maybe 30 kilometers in thickness is sort of equivalent to the crust on planet Earth, that's actually about the same thickness as well, but obviously is made out of entirely different material. But underneath all of this, unlike Earth, where we have mantle, with all of the hot magma on the inside, Europa most likely possesses some kind of a subsurface ocean, very likely made out of water mixed with something else with the ocean being anywhere from 60 to maybe 200 kilometers in depth, with the total amount of water here being much larger than on planet Earth. And it's actually in these oceans that today some scientists believe that we might be able to find some kind of ancient life. And mostly because in the past some of the previous investigations have already discovered quite a lot of interesting elements, including the elements usually required for life to form, either hidden on the surface 
or coming from some of these ice geysers. But because all these detections so far have been kind of preliminary and potentially not very accurate, almost 10 years ago the scientists proposed the Europa's Clipper mission. The mission to maybe finally confirm if there is life here after all. Which by itself is already an extremely important mission, because it finally might answer the question of whether life evolved anywhere else except for planet Earth. And naturally, if we don't find life here, and if we also don't find it on Titan, with the mission we're going to be discussing later, that only gives even more credibility to the so-called rare Earth hypothesis. Life might be just super super rare. But before we get there, the first step is to actually get all of these new images and compare them to some of the previous images taken by Galileo while also replacing some of the low resolution coverage with the new images we have now. And one of the first discoveries that's going to be coming out in the next few months is going to be in regards to the geological activity. By comparing relatively high resolution images from Galileo with the ones from Juno taken now, the scientists are hoping to specifically identify how the surface of Europa changed in the last 20 years. And so whatever the scientists discover is going to be pretty intriguing. They might actually discover that the geological surface here is very active and things have changed quite a lot, or they might discover that things do not change as frequently as we think. Either way though, we still don't really know because the studies have not come out yet. Now at the same time during the flyby, Juno also used several other instruments including the microwave radiometer that allows it to see a little bit deeper into the ice itself. And this will allow the scientists to compile data on the thickness of the icy crust and discover the regions where we might find these icy geysers, mapping the regions where water evaporation is more likely and thus mapping the regions that the Clipper mission is going to be exploring later on. And this will include data on the regions where we believe there might be liquid water present in relatively shallow subsurface pockets. Which actually relates to one of the mysteries of Europa. There are these unusual chaotic structures, such as elliptical lenticula that you see right here, sometimes referred to as freckles, that sometimes look like domes, sometimes look like pits, or dark spots. The scientists today are not entirely clear how these features are produced, but one of the potential explanations is some kind of a underground water deposit that seems to push these features from below, which suggests that there might be lakes underneath, and lakes that are not too deep either. And so we might actually get the answers about these features in the next few months. On the other hand, the biggest mystery of Europa, and one of the biggest mysteries in the solar system, is really in regards to what you see on the screen. The unusual features that we usually refer to as linea, series of various dark streaks that seem to be pretty much all over the surface here. Now other moons of Jupiter have their own features and have their own mysteries, but Europa is unique in having these almost like tiger stripes that for a very long time did not have a very good explanation. But today the scientists believe that these actually represent various edges of Europa's crust and to some extent are actually kind of similar to various edges we find on Earth, especially the ones we see underneath oceans, in the oceanic ridges. In other words, the formation here might be kind of similar to what you see right here, except obviously instead of the crust and the mantle, we get ice and water. And so one of the mysteries that the scientists are going to be trying to answer here is actually by how much these linea moved in the last 20 years compared to the images from Galileo. The preliminary images already show us that there is a little bit of a difference, but the exact changes are not certain yet. And because a lot of these stripes are up to 20 kilometers across, and many seem to contain quite a lot of darker material, very likely similar to organic tholins present on Pluto, by discovering the changes in the last 20 years, the scientists might get closer to figuring out exactly what happens on Europa to produce all of this. Although in the past, the scientists have already discovered an unusual pattern that seems to be caused by Jupiter. Now because Europa is tidally locked and is always basically facing the same way toward Jupiter, a lot of these stress patterns, a lot of these unusual stripes, should generally form a very specific pattern that the scientists should be able to predict. And the thing is, when it comes to the youngest of these fractures, the pattern is indeed as predicted. But the much older fractures appear to be in different locations and also in the orientation that doesn't seem to follow this pattern. It's not entirely clear why this is so, but one of the explanations suggests that the surface in this case rotates slightly faster than the interior of the moon. And because of this, the ice crust moves slightly differently as well with the potential rotation difference being approximately 12,000 years. But exactly how all of this works, and why the patterns are different from what the scientists predict, 
is still a mystery even today. But there are also other mysteries as well. For example, one of the potential propositions for a future mission was a type of a lander that would try to land somewhere along the equator, possibly drill into the ice, maybe even release some kind of a subsurface submarine, and basically would serve as the first rover on the moon of Jupiter. But some of the recent studies determined that we don't really have enough resolution to see if it's even possible to land here. These new images might allow us to see what's happening here, but one of the previous missions using radar established that the entire surface might actually be covered in very unusual features, kind of similar to what we found on Pluto actually, known as penitentes. This is from the desert in Chile, and we know that these exist on other objects in the solar system. They're actually produced when ice, instead of melting, sublimates and leaves behind these relatively large blade-like formations which would make landing here practically impossible. And that's because unlike Earth, where the gravity is much stronger, on Europa and on Pluto, these objects would be huge, at least 10 meters or 30 feet in height, but probably much, much larger. And so if you have all of this on the surface, it would make any landing practically impossible. At least in certain regions, where the scientists were kind of interested in landing. You can actually learn more about this in one of the older videos somewhere in the description. But despite all of this, the surface of Europa is still extremely intriguing, and would actually be one of the most exciting objects that we can maybe one day land on. For example, we know that the surface here is extremely smooth. This is actually the smoothest object in the solar system. There are not a lot of grooves here, there are not a lot of mountains, it's more or less very flat. Which would of course make this a pretty interesting location to visit. But maybe not for people, because on top of this there's also quite a lot of radiation. As a matter of fact, any astronaut spending just one day on Europa would receive more radiation than during an entire mission, a mission that would take several years, to an object like Mars. In more scientific terms, it's approximately 5 CV per day, which is basically a deadly dose. So any crewed mission is most likely out of the question, and that includes any object around Jupiter. But a rover mission or any robotic mission would be really exciting, especially because there's also a bit of a magnetic field that the scientists want to learn more about and whose presence once again confirms that there seems to be a salty ocean underneath, because it's the only way we think the magnetic field in this case is generated. Now it's not really that strong, it's about 6 times weaker than the one around Ganymede, but it's still a feature the scientists want to understand, and more importantly, the presence of this feature can help us understand if we can use this to potentially study oceans underneath other objects as well. And so if all goes well, within the next 10 years we might finally have the answer of whether there is life on Europa, which would then help us answer the question of whether life exists anywhere else except for planet Earth. And in the next few months, we'll hopefully be getting more analysis from various pictures taken by the Juno mission, potentially discovering or revealing more detail about the surface, helping us understand how the geological processes work on this unusual moon. And thus, as a result, teaching us about geology of other objects in the solar system. But until then, well, that's pretty much it. Check out all of the relevant links, including all of the images released by the Juno mission so far, in the description below. Subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.